All right, I'm one and a half meters from everyone, so. All right. <laughs> um, really happy to be here, and uh, thank you for the 108 questions, which I'm told that I need to answer in the short uh, time frame of 27 minutes, so do the math. Uh, I'm not going to answer them all, of course, uh, but uh, you have already voted, uh, and if you want to make additional votes, um, there's this QR code, uh, and I'll uh, strive to answer as much as possible within this limited time frame. So without further ado, um, 47 people, like by a large margin, in the first question uh, is, quote, my sister came out as being gay and was not supported by her community. What words of advice can you offer students who may be facing the same situation, unquote? Well, um, that depends on how old your sister uh, is. But anyway, when I was seven years old, I came out as being left-handed. Uh, and uh, at the time, uh, my dad uh, and his mother, my grandma, wasn't so happy about it. They said that if I write on chalkboards, uh, you know, with my left hand, uh, there will be a chalk on my sleeve, as if that's a big thing, it's not, uh, and, and so on. And so they convinced me to also uh, practice right-handed writing. Later on, I would learn that that's because they were also born left-handed uh, and were chided by their teachers uh, as uh, you know not um, normal and not fitting the norm. Fortunately, when I was eight years old, that's one year afterward, there came personal computers, uh, and then it turns out that if I type with both my hands, I type faster, uh, and so it ceased to be a problem. Nowadays, the the stylus, the mouse, uh, whatever input screen, touch screens, and so on doesn't care the handedness of you, uh, and it ceased to be a problem. So it's the same uh, with the societal configuration about sexual orientations and gender identity. It's just because the older people, um, they, they're still, you know, teachable. It's just uh, neuroplasticity and all. Uh, it just takes them uh, longer to learn uh, compared to you guys, which learn very quickly. Uh, and so just have a little bit of patience uh, and show them the, the right path uh, and uh, let them know that the social configuration has now changed, uh, that it doesn't matter at all anymore, uh, at least in Taiwan of your sexual orientation when you want to start a family or things like that. Um, and so just be patient uh, and do not lose hope. Uh, the elderly are teachable. That's the words I want to share. Um, okay, cool. Ready. Um, so the 29 people would like to know, uh, did my parents uh, go again? Wow, that's some... Um, Really loud feedback. Uh, okay, right. Positive feedback, I hope. Um, 29 would like to know, did my parents go against any of my decisions? Um, yeah, they, they voiced their concern when I dropped out of middle school, uh, which may not be the best advice to give you guys. But uh, when I dropped out of middle school, <laughs> when I was uh, 14 years old, uh, they, they said that uh, it's actually against the law, which, which was true, uh, and that uh, my uh, household will be fined, I think, NT $300 a day or something if I re keep refusing to go to school. So I'm like, okay, let me talk to the head of the school. And so they arranged uh, for a meeting uh, for me to talk with the principal, uh, Principal Du Hui Ping of the Beijing Middle School. Uh, and then I showed the principal an email printout uh, that my exchange uh, with people in ARXIV, that's a Cornell University preprint server, uh, where the people write their journal articles, but before the peer review of the uh, academic publications, they post it online for everybody to review, and I'll just randomly write emails to research who didn't know I was just 14 years old. Uh, and so we'll start doing research uh, together. And so I just showed uh, that to the principal saying, um, you know, you tell me that I need to finish my studies, I'll get my PhD, and I can work as a postdoctorate or a research assistant to the professors that I admire. But now the professor has written back and we're already doing research together. So what's the point of going to the middle school anymore? Uh, and uh, uh, Principal Du Hui Ping, after thinking for a minute or so, saying that, um, okay, so tomorrow you don't have to go to school anymore, and I will cover for you, meaning that she will fake the records. Uh, right, so, uh, I'll, uh, so my household will not get fined. Uh, of course, uh, afterwards we'll have the Experimental Education Act and so on, so uh, people younger than me can uh, make this kind of work, uh, you know, working well, as I said, studying, sorry, uh, learning from home uh, and so on uh, without uh, incurring penalties. Uh, but even though my parents was not totally happy uh, with my decision, I think it's really uh, to their credit that they arranged this discussion for me or with the real decision maker, which is the head of the school, uh, instead of trying to play this intermediary role of trying to convince me on behalf of the head of school or convince the uh, head of school on behalf of the agency uh, to do their life um, 
defining really decisions uh, that I made uh, when I was uh, just a middle school student. So that's pretty pretty rad. Um, so 21 people would like to know um, how did I know that the coding I did at age eight was done correctly if I did not own a computer? Right, that's a good question. Um, so my my coding uh, for for what counts as coding uh, on the piece of paper is literally uh, just print hello world, uh, and so I'm pretty sure if I write print hello world with the right quotation marks, uh, and then I'll just use a pencil to write hello world, uh, and then draw a cursor. Uh, the cursor would not blink because that would take too much energy, <laughs> but I'll just draw a cursor there, uh, and then waiting for the next line of input, and the next day I will wake up and type uh, on this uh, paper keyboard. CLS, enter, uh, and then take an eraser and erase all the pencil part uh, of the screen. Um, and so uh, I, I really didn't write very sophisticated programs uh, using this paper computer, because after I keep doing this uh, for about two or three weeks, uh, my parents uh, you know, just gave up and bought me a real personal computer <laughs> so, so that I can check the computer uh, programs uh, on a real computer. So that's, uh, I think it more shows a kind of initiative in uh, computational thinking of willing to learn how a programmer's mind works, um, just working on this, uh, like I think it was introduction to Apple Basic or something alone, but uh, of course you need a real computer if you want to uh, run very sophisticated programs. 15 people would like to know, would your parents support anything you do or you wanted to do, such as being transgender, quitting school at an early age, or going to the States? Um, they, they don't necessarily support anything I do. When I uh, decided to, to couch surf when I was uh, in my early 20s, uh, to essentially just go around the world, going to, I think, 20 cities uh, in a span of not even two years, uh, and just visiting each and every researcher I met uh, online, uh, and just, just you know stay at their, their home until they get fed up with me and have to recommend somebody else and pay my train ticket uh, for me to go to uh, the next researcher. Uh, I, I do this to... Uh, imitate the great mathematician Paul Ardush, uh, who uh, did the same thing. Uh, and so um, my, my parents were, were quite kind of worried because back in, in their time, people don't randomly go to a stranger's home and stay at a stranger's homes. Uh, but they also understand that uh, the online community is something that they have little experience of. Uh, and so uh, they just asked me to be careful uh, and to keep them posted, which is partly why I post a blog every day. Uh, if I don't post a blog for a consecutive number of days, they'll get, uh, you know, um, worried and uh, try to contact me uh, through our representative offices all around the world, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, that, that sort of thing never happened. The researchers uh, who are very kind online are, turns out to also be very kind in, in real life. Um, and so um, they're also uh, learning something, I guess, about trusting the online communities, the free software community in particular, uh, and also tr trusting strangers. Again, as I said, the uh, elderly, they are, um, they're, they're, uh, there's room for education uh, for them and if you explain clearly, someday they learn. Um, 15 people were like, you know, was it hard to be the first transgender cabinet member? I, I don't know whether I'm the first. I'm the first openly transgender cabinet member. For, for what I know, everybody else may be transgender, to just, you know, not open about it. Uh, but the first openly transgender cabinet member, um, I think just like any so-called pioneers, um, it breaks new ground. Uh, we get to exercise our uh, HR department, as human resource uh, department, when I filled in my my registration um, form uh, to become a public servant. Uh, on the gender field, I fill in Wu, uh, which is uh, none, I guess. Uh, and that's partly because next to that form um, it, um, is a uh, party affiliation box, uh, which I also filled in Wu. Uh, and so I, uh, so I um, filled in this, and it turns out it really is a input field. It's not a, you know, a selection one out of many or a, a taking one box to the exclusion of other boxes. It turns out that you can just write your gender um, on, on the registration form uh, as a HR uh, in the cabinet. So many more people now know about this. Uh, and so I think it's always good to test the limit uh, of any system and to turn anything that looks like a checkbox into a selection field and anything that looks like a selection field into a uh, just filling in anything field. 
13 people would like to know what motivated me to return to Taiwan when working in the Silicon Valley at the age of 35, where I could earn some number uh, an hour. Um, well, uh, first of all, that's only if I uh, keep that as Bitcoin, uh, but I did not. When I signed the contracts with Apple, with Oxford University Press, uh, we just take whatever the exchange rate of Bitcoin at that time uh, as a my hourly rate, and because their um, ledger system could not handle Bitcoin, so they always paid me in either uh, pound sterling or in US dollars, so I never received Bitcoin. It's just a bill in Bitcoin at that exchange rate, so more as a advocacy uh, than anything. Uh, but still, yeah, that's like literally like three times or more um, in terms of monthly salary compared to my salary as the digital minister. Uh, so why would I uh, want to work with the government? Well, it's more fun. Uh, if I <laughs> work only with Apple, for example, then I need to care about people who uh, have bought Apple services and products. And uh, it will not be a good idea for me to care about people who are not using Apple computers or Apple devices. But uh, nowadays, uh, working as a public servant, uh, if people do not like, the, for example, the tax filing software and uh, revert back to filing on, on uh, paper, we, we can't do what the private sector always do, is that if you don't like our service, you can take your business el elsewhere. We, we can't say, if you don't like the experience of filing your tax, you can file your tax to some other government. Uh, well, I guess you could literally you know, immigrate, uh, but that's a very difficult thing uh, to suggest to your own citizens. So instead, we need to work with people who care the most uh, about the digital service and complain the most about digital service and then co-create something. And people always feel, because we're a liberal democracy, uh, that they have a lot of new ideas to, to try out with. And that's uh, more engaging and more uh, personally fulfilling uh, than working in the private sector for me personally. Uh, and so for me, it's not just about the money or it's primarily not about the money. 12 people would like to know, what was the first thing I did after I dropped out? Did I regret dropping out? Not, not at all. As, as I mentioned, I dropped out with the blessing of the head of the middle school. Uh, and so she gave me uh, the complete freedom uh, to try out things. Uh, and it's always there if I want to uh, go back. So I think that's the best deal, is that um, you uh, drop out, not uh, kind of foregoing the link that you have built, uh, the solidarity you have built uh, with the faculty and with your fellow classmates, but uh, you're like a, a pioneer that can explore a new landscape. In my case, the first thing I did uh, was to co-found a company, a software company, uh, and then just start this life as an entrepreneur. Uh, but whatever I learned, I also can go back and share uh, with the faculty and with my former classmates. So I don't regret it at all. I think it's a, a really good thing to have uh, tried uh, in the uh, tender age of 14 or 15. So, which leads to the next question. What motivated me to create a company at the age of 15? Um, at that time, uh that was a, it, it was a publishing press and not founded by me. I, I'm just one of the authors uh, that wrote, co-wrote a book about the, the, the book is called The Roads to Cyberspace, about how I learned computers. Uh, and so the book was reasonably um, selling, reasonably okay. But at the time there was this very new technology called the World Wide Web and called the uh, secure uh, HTTPS, the secure hypertext transmission protocol. And this new idea that you can actually get your credit credit card, uh, recognize online, and buy some books. Uh, and so I was very eager to try out this new technology, new back then, uh, and set up the first e-commerce site for the publishing press to sell essentially my own book. Uh, and, and that was pretty instructive and actually quite successful. Uh, and so then it led me to think about maybe we can publish not only books, but also computer software, such as search engines and so on. Uh, and so that motivated me to share whatever software code that I was working at that point and then turned that book publisher into also a software publisher and then later on just uh, exclusively a software publisher and the internet community builder for, for example, the C2C auction uh, like eBay and so on uh, back then. So I guess it's just fun and a bunch of friends that all think it's fun to start a company. Uh, ten people would like to know, what did my parents think uh, about me when I left school? 
Uh, well, I, I think they want me to continue my education. So one of the things they suggested me is that I can just uh, randomly go to the nearby university. In my case, that would be the National Zhengzhou University and attend the classes that they attended. Because you see, both my parents uh, were graduates uh, from the Zhengzhou University. Uh, and so they have a list of professors that they like. Uh, and some of the professors are no longer around. Some of the professors are still around. And so they just suggested that I can just maybe go to those professors' classes, uh, and, and that I did. Uh, and so in, in a sense, uh, I just um, worked with the professors in a kind of peer-to-peer -peer fashion. Some of the professors really like me, so set up like weekly office hours where I can just go to their research room and talk for one hour. For, um, probably anything and everything, uh, and most of them didn't quite care uh, that there's one extra student uh, in their class because I'm uh, very pro-social, I guess. I always engage in uh, real discussions, and I, I don't really want a, a diploma out of them, so they don't have to spend time you know, grading me and, and things like that. So it's like extra quality for no extra effort. Uh, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, and so they, they are all okay with me just uh, attending their undergrad and later on graduate level classes. So that that's what my parents think. It's just don't stop my education. And um, I think that's uh, a really good uh, topic that I can bring up with my, stu uh, my, sorry, my parents too, who are my students. That's in my mind anyway, to teach them about their uh, professor's uh, later thinking. So um, 10 people like Neil, what do you think supported me the most when I decided to be transgender and drop out of school? Uh, certainly the internet community, because even if you feel like you're a minority, like um, just one in a thousand or something, uh, that's still like 20K people in Taiwan alone uh, that's just things uh, like you, right? So with the right hashtags, with the, uh, well, we didn't have hashtag back then, but with the right Usenet groups, uh, you can find uh, people who uh, think similarly, who consider uh, themselves kind of your, your kin or, or your tribe or your uh, kinfolk and things like that. And so uh, then you won't feel alone anymore. Uh, and so I think what's the best about the internet communities, both back then and nowadays, uh, is that people do not have to meet face to face in order to form this kind of support groups. And with this kind of support group, uh, one no longer feels that one is in the minority, but rather is just one representative uh, out of this internet community projected uh, to the so-called real world. And I still think that my work in the cabinet is a projection from the free software community and also internet governance community into day-to-day -day politics. I'm still thinking myself as more of an ambassador than a minister. So, uh, did you eat animals while I am in the forest? Uh, this is like out of Jungle Book or something. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't in the forest uh, and um, I didn't take my kind of survival classes, so I'm not sure what this question is about. Uh, but um, I, I do eat uh, animals, um, so I'm almost completely vegetarian, but I do eat oysters uh, because they're carbon neutral or carbon capturing and they don't suffer. Uh, but uh, that's quite besides the point, but I don't think there's any oysters in the forest, so maybe I'll eat some mushrooms instead. Okay, right, so eight people <laughs> would like to know, um, how do you hack legally? How can hacking save lives? Um, so um, a cybersecurity hacker that hacks legally is called a white hat hacker, or nowadays also called an ethical hacker. So in the same way uh, that uh, you would uh, recruit people to, uh, when you do public construction, for example, building a really long term, no, we hire professional um uh, I, I'm not even sure what was the word for that. Professional people that can start a fire uh, and burn things. Um, arsonist sounds wrong, right? Because those would be the black hats. Uh, so professional uh, fire testers uh, that uh, just try to burn the, the tunnel and, and test the firefighting capabilities, the automated triggers and things like that. Uh, in the same way, well, what we call penetration testing or pen testing uh, is that uh, before we deploy any digital service, we will hire white hat hackers to try to to attack the system and to find the uh, uh, vulnerabilities and tell us how to think like a attacker and what do what we call purple teaming, which is the attacking team, the red team, working with the defense team, the blue team. Uh, this is not Tenet, which used the same color code. But anyway, so when the red team and the blue team can work together to improve the system's resilience, that's legal ha cybersecurity hacking and you can uh, derive a lot of fun and get paid really well as a white hat hacker, especially nowadays in Taiwan because we make sure there's 
a lot of budget and you're also, um, you know, get uh, recognized by ministers and the president and so on as national heroes. Uh, all this to make sure that you do not fall to the dark side, which always have more cookies. Okay, so the, um, I think the last one, uh, question. Um, I know you don't really comment about politics, don't I? Uh, however, I would like to ask uh, your question. What will be the best time for Taiwan to declare her independence? Well, certainly in the Neolithic age. That's a standard answer from me. Uh, because you see, uh, before the Neolithic age, uh, there was a, a time when the climate was um, a little bit warm and the Taiwan Strait um, you know, just floated out. So it used to be a land bridge across the Pescador, uh, the Penghu Islands and so on. But when the uh, temperature turned warmer, uh, the sea level rose uh, around the Neolithic age and then this land bridge uh, dissipated. And that's when Taiwan gained the independence uh, from the Eurasian plate. Uh, and uh, after that, the Eurasian plate wasn't uh, so uh, still about it. So we continue to have a lot of earthquakes when the Eurasian plate still pushes uh, with the the Philippine Sea Plate. Uh, that's why we have earthquake all the time. And most of our buildings are uh, built like a, a boat with a boat uh, shaped uh, underneath a uh, level uh, that can be more resilient against earthquakes. But also because of that, Taiwan raises two and a half centimeters on the top of Taiwan. That's the Savia or Pentogunung or Yushan or Jade Mountain, many different names uh, depending on the culture. Uh, and so that's why we can keep rising and tour the sky and see uh, the ideological as well as the uh, geological uh, tensions uh, in a way that is more um, skyward, that's more upwing. So instead of left wing or right wing, uh, we will see always from a more upwing uh, point of view. And the best time to declare is the Neolithic age. But of course, uh, we don't think there's any declarations back from the Neolithic age, uh, but you can do so now. You can retroactively say uh, Taiwan has been an independent island since the Neolithic age. So that's pretty much it. Uh, and thank you for the great questions. Sorry that I left 95 unanswered, but I imagine that it will be a good agenda for your continued discussion. I will read them all too. Thank you. Mr. Tung, on behalf of KS, we are so happy that you would come today and take time with us. Middle school, uh, thank you for your thoughtful questions and your upvotes. And as you walk away from the auditorium, I want to encourage you to think about what you heard and think of more questions to share with each other and your teachers in the time ahead. Uh, Mr. Payne, where would we like for them to go?